Hello, I'm Diana Mason. And I'm Susan Apel. And we are members of the steering committee for the New York State Action Coalition, a coalition that's come together to move forward the recommendations on the Institute of Medicine's report on the future of nursing, and to move forward on those recommendations in New York State. We first want to wish you a very happy Nurses Week and to share with you some reasons why we should be celebrating as well as to talk with you about some work that remains to be done. We'll first talk with you about the Nurse Practitioner Modernization Act that was just adopted in New York State. One of the most exciting things to happen in New York State for advanced practice nurses just occurred less than two months ago. It is the first time certainly in my career as a nurse practitioner that I can remember the governor, the Senate, mm -hmm. and the Assembly of the State of New York all aligned behind patients, for patients, to increase access to care and to utilize nurse practitioners to the full extent of their education and training. We are thrilled in New York State that the Nurse Practitioner Modernization Act passed in the governor's budget bill. So what does that mean for us? It means that we made some noise. It means that we have been recognized. And it means that the governor, the Senate, and the Assembly see advanced practice nurses, nurse practitioners in particular, as part of the solution to the health care crisis confronting New Yorkers and the rest of our nation. Should I talk about some specifics, Diana? Yes, please do. So what did we gain from this legislation? In the past, nurse practitioners practiced in New York State utilizing a written practice agreement. The written practice agreement required us to collaborate with a physician in New York State. Statutory collaboration is a restriction for nurse practitioners, for any group of healthcare professionals, because we cannot practice unless we tie our practice to a physician's practice. What that meant in the real world, on the ground, practically, is that if a nurse practitioner wanted to practice as a nurse practitioner, he or she had to seek the services of a physician. We would have had to go to a physician, request permission, if you will, to allow that physician to collaborate with us. Then we would draw up a collaborative practice agreement that included the physician's name, license number, practice location, and our practice protocols, which the physician had to sign off on. As well, the physician was required to review our charts quarterly. That meant that the nurse practitioner took charts from his or her practice to the physician, and the physician reviewed them. It was a retrospective chart review, so the care had already happened. While New York State was not the most restrictive state for nurse practitioner practice, this of course does pose a problem for patient access. If a nurse practitioner was unable to locate a physician to work with him or her as a collaborating physician, the nurse practitioner could not practice. If a nurse practitioner had a collaborative relationship with a physician and that collaborative relationship was dissolved for any reason, the nurse practitioner could not practice. That situation had the potential to be dire in that the nurse practitioner may already have had a panel of patients. And Susan, I have an example of a nurse in upstate New York who has a panel of 2,000 patients and when her collaborating physician was no longer available, she then was going to not be able to see those 2,000 patients and she was one of a few primary care providers, very few primary care providers in the region. So for rural regions in particular, this is really significant. It is significant. Not only did, are patients unable to gain access to the person who may be the only provider in the area, insurances were not able to impanel nurse practitioners because they remained invisible providers under the collaborative agreement. As well, nurse practitioners were unable to have their data analyzed Mm -hmm. And this is an enormous issue. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to prove that we give care that is in accordance with the standards of care of disease management in this country. So, what to do? In 2006, the Nurse Practitioner Association of New York State said this is a problem. It is a problem for our patients. It is a problem for us as providers. It's a problem for the nursing profession. 
because we are independent providers of health care. So they embarked on a political strategy. It's a wonderful case study, and maybe some, someday when the mm -hmm. story needs to be told, we'll be able to tell it in its entirety. But since 2006, nurse practitioners have worked tirelessly to move legislation through New York State that would permit New York State nurse practitioners to have full practice authority. And guess what? A few weeks ago, the Nurse Practitioner Modernization Act was passed. And what does that do for nurse practitioners? Some very good things. First of all, a nurse practitioner who wants to maintain that written collaborative practice agreement is free to do so. So nurse practitioners are under no legal, uh, have no legal responsibility to change the way they practice if indeed they do not wish to do so. However, two major steps toward full practice authority. The first is that only nurse practitioners with fewer than 3,600 practice hours are required to maintain a written collaborative practice agreement. That's a positive step. Second, nurse practitioners who have more than 3,600 hours of clinical practice can fulfill the requirements of collaboration without a written practice agreement, without identifying protocols, and without seeking a physician to sign a document that says the physician is collaborating. While the law does require us to continue to collaborate, it's what nurse practitioners do, it's what nurses do, while the law does require us to continue to collaborate, the mechanism whereby we do that has been relaxed, and the rules and regulations around how we document that collaboration are really yet to be written. Because while the law calls for collaboration, the law has allowed the State Education Department to determine the way that that will be documented. So we have made steps in the right direction. One fine day, we will remove any inference in law to mandatory collaboration. And knowing how hard nurse practitioners in New York State have worked, I am certain that they will be upon us. So this is a real step forward. Uh, it is not turning New York State into a full practice authority state yet, but we are headed in the right direction. There are other challenges that remain though, and one challenge that I want to highlight that many nurse practitioners are bringing to our attention is the fact that they cannot get credentialed by some insurance plans, and this includes some new plans under the state health exchange. So if I as a nurse practitioner can't get credentialed by an insurance plan and my patient is covered under this plan, I can't see the patient. So the New York State Association of Nurse Practitioners is doing an analysis of to what extent are insurers credentialing nurse practitioners or not and will be developing a strategy and the coalition certainly would be pleased to work with them on moving forward a strategy to get insurers to realize this is in the best interests of the people that they serve to have nurse practitioners credentialed under the plan. So lots of things to celebrate during this 2014 year uh, for nursing and during Nurses Week and the State Action Coalition hopes that you will join us in moving forward on some of these important issues. We hope that you will follow us at online at new nysactioncoalition.com. That's nysactioncoalition.com. And from there, you can click on the right icon and follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. So on behalf of the steering committee of the State Action Co New York State Action Coalition, we wish you a wonderful Nurses Week and look forward to working with you to continue to move forward on these very important issues that are really about how to promote the health of the people in New York State. So thank you. Thank you. And you know what, Diana, we're nurses, so happy Yes, happy Nurses Week to you too. Thank you.